friends today we are going to discuss about blood transfusion adverse reactions blood transfusion adverse reactions are broadly classified into immune and non immune which are further classified into immediate and delayed reactions now let us first discuss in detail immune adverse reactions pathological mechanism for development of this reactions are sensitization to rbc or wbc and platelets or to plasma proteins now let us see each of the immediate and delayed reactions individually now immediate reaction means reaction occurring within 24 hours of blood transfusion first one is hemolytic transfusion reaction which is mainly due to abo incompatibility and it leads to intravascular hemolysis second one is febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction which occurs due to reaction of to wbc and platelets now third is allergic transfusion reaction which occurs due to sensitization to plasma proteins for example either anaphylactic shock or urticaria which mainly occurs due to iga antibody formation now fourth an important one is trali that is transfusion related acute lung injury which usually occurs within 4 hours of blood transfusion and patient present with complaint of dyspnea and hypoxia is seen secondary to non cardiogenic interstitial pulmonary edema which we also known as ARDS now main mechanism for development of trali is either due to passive transfer of donor antibody against hla or neutrophil antigens which react with the recipients wbc hence leading to increase pulmonary microvascular permeability or second mechanism is there is release of a uh, reactive lipid products of donor blood cells during the blood storage and when we transfuse such blood recipients develop trali now let us discuss delayed hemolytic reaction delayed means which develops after 24 hours or few days or months and rarely after year now first important in this is delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction which occurs mainly due to rh incompatibility and in which there is either formation of igg antibodies or complement coated destruction is there and mainly it is extravascular hemolysis now second common thing is allo immunization of rbc hla platelet or neutrophilic antigens and which is usually seen after 48 hours now post transfusion purpura which occurs rarely but commonly seen in multiparous women having more history of blood transfusion or platelet transfusion and mechanism for development of this is immune complex formation against human platelet antigen in short we know it, it as hpa 1a clinical feature for this is patient present with thrombocytopenia and bleeding usually after 4 uh, to 7 days or after 10 days now graft versus host disease which is as such rarely seen but it is fatal and more commonly seen in immunocompromised recipients second in due to having hla similarity between transfusion donor and recipient and third mechanism is a uh, number of transfused t lymphocytes having capability of multiplying and engrafting so 
In this, patient present to us with pancytopenia and bleeding or having some infectious complication. Immune modulatory effects in which more commonly it is immunosuppressive effect is seen. Non-immune adverse reactions are further classified into immediate one and delayed in which common is bacterial contamination or sepsis. Usually patient develops a sudden onset of fever during transfusion or uh, after few hours of blood transfusion. This thing will further discuss in detail in uh, next video now second common thing in this is transfusion associated circulatory overload in short it is also known as DACO it is usually seen within six hours of transfusion and patient is having clinical feature of sudden breathlessness mechanism for this pulmonary edema is either fluid overload due to excessive volume or fast rate of transfusion now let us discuss delayed non-immune adverse reaction in which first one common is pulmonary microembolization or air embolism which is rarely seen nowadays because of uh, blood transfusion is done with plastic bags with negative pressure. In case if it develops approximately 10 to 40 ml of air in circulation is needed to develop the symptoms. Now second in this is transfusion hemosidrosis or an overload it is usually seen due to repeated blood transfusions in absence of any blood loss for example patients of thalassemia major or severe chronic refractory anemias who need repeated blood transfusion and one unit of whole blood contains 250 milligram of iron so approximately around 100 units of blood transfused then develops the iron overload organ damages. Now third thing is massive transfusion. It means transfusion of more than 50% of blood volume within three hours in adult or more than or equal to one time of total blood volume replaced in 24 hours. It is very dangerous or fatal and if it occurs then it leads to many complications like metabolic alkalosis or acidosis electrolyte imbalance like hypokalemia or hypokalemia hypocalcemia or hypomagnesemia and or coagulant like citrate anticoagulants which are used can develop citrate toxicity also patient develops coagulopathies ultimately le leading to disseminated intravascular coagulopathy we know it as DIC thrombocytopenia or hypothermia now fourth one is transfusion transmissible diseases in this we have uh, mainly either viral diseases bacterial diseases or parasitical diseases which we will further discuss in detail in next video thrombophlebitis it is seen if we transfuse through venous section in saphenous vein or if we transfuse at same site for longer duration thank you